Okay, so we want to add some fraction, or some rational expressions. We've got x plus four over x squared plus two x plus one plus two over x minus three. We have to factor the quadratic, if possible. It might not be possible to factor. But in this case, it is. We recognize this as a spectral product. And if we don't, it's still pretty easy to see that this has to be x plus 1 times x plus 1. Checking that out. In the use of distributive law through this, you do end up multiplying 1 by 1, and that is 1. So that works. And you end up multiplying the 1 by the x. And you multiply this x by the 1. That gives you 2x. So it works. Although you really ought to write it out. Okay. Um, let me. This is over. Just to make sure we understand. Uh, Factoring x squared plus 5x plus 6, we see that 6 can be written as 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. So we could either try x plus 3 times x plus 2 or x plus 1 times x plus 6. Well, so we try 3 and 2 on the first try. If I multiply this out using the distributive law, remember, it's not like this times this, and this times this, and this times this, and this times this. Uh, although that's the way it works out. We write out the distributive law until we're sure we understand it, okay? I say, you know, first 20 things you factor, you ought to write out like this, okay? So this times this is, well, take the x, multiply by the x plus two here, and then the 3 multiplied by the x plus 2. It's so x times x plus 2 plus 3 times x plus 2. Okay, there we have it. And then when we multiply these out, x times x gives us x squared. x times 2 gives us 2x. 3 times x gives us 3x. 3 times 2 gives us 6. And 2x and 3x add up to 5x. And of course, we have our 6. So we check out our factoring by using the distributive law without writing without taking any shortcuts, okay? I mean, people want to do this. That's all right, but you bypass a better understanding of the distributive law if you don't take the five seconds it takes to write this out and then multiply this, okay? You do that 20 times, then you're going to get the idea. Depending on how quickly you get it, some people might get it, doing it twice. Don't count on being one of those people, <laughs> okay? Uh, some people might need a hundred times, which might make it difficult for them to learn the subject, but most people in this class, 10 or 20 times would do it, okay? Almost anybody. There are some of them kind of couldn't do it in that time. So if you just reinforce the rule, every time you use it for the first 20 times or so until you're secure with the rule and always see the rule even when you're skipping it then you'll learn it and then you'll be in better shape for the exam okay so anyhow okay back to this problem the x squared plus 2x plus 1 factors like this either using trial and error or noticing that you have the um special form about the, the special product here. Okay, so it's going to be this, and then times two over x minus three. Now your common denominator. Common denominator is
Well, you have to have this denominator in your common denominator. And you also have to have this denominator in your common denominator. So there's your common denominator. Then by passing this node here, we have x plus 4 over x plus 1 times x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3 over x minus 3 plus 2 over x minus 3. Multiply by x plus one times x plus one. Have to write that pretty small, but that's just x plus one over times x plus one over x plus one times x plus one. Because now when I multiply out this denominator, it'll be identical to what I get when I multiply out this denominator. I might not even bother to multiply that denominator out. But if I did, it would be the same because all three factors match the three factors of this one. They're in different order over here, but since they're multiplied, the order doesn't matter. Okay, so that gives us x plus 4 times x minus 3 over x minus 3 plus 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 over x minus 3 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. Now, these are the same denominator, so now we can add the fractions. We're going to have This numerator plus this numerator all over the same denominator. Now I'm going to have to write all that out again. Then I multiply these two terms using the distributive law. You have plenty of opportunities to write out the distributive law. Write it out. I'm going to show you here if you're not totally secure with what you're doing. And always come back to the definition of the distributive law. Always think the distributive law before you use any shortcuts or tricks. Now we have to add up all the numerators, all the terms in the numerator. We get 3x squared plus 5x minus 10 over this. To factor this, we could have a 1 and a 10 a minus one, I'm sorry, one and a minus 10 
a minus one and a 10, a negative two and a five, a two and a negative five from the end of our two factors. And we can have either a three X and an X or a X and a three X. Um, now you remember that if you followed the way we analyze these when we first encountered them. Now there is a trick that open math gives you that allows you to see if you can factor this. Um, there's another trick and I'll explain it in a little while after we do the quadratic formula. It's just that the square of this minus four times this times this would have to be a perfect square. Okay. Now, that gives you 25. That gives you negative 120. Um, and 25 and negative 120 is 75. Now it's 85. Uh, but it's not a perfect square, so I know that's not going to factor. You can follow the trick open math gives you to see whether this factors. Uh, turns out that it doesn't. The reason we try to factor the numerator, though, is that one of the factors might match one of the factors in the denominator. Now, I'll just mention this. To make the denominator zero, you could let x equal three, couldn't you? Well, if you plug three in for x here, you don't get zero. So three gives you zero down here. It doesn't give you zero up here. So x minus three is not going to divide into this. If x is one, not negative. If x is negative one, plug negative one in to the numerator. It doesn't give you zero. But if x is negative one, it does give you zero in the denominator. Well, if none of the zeros of the denominator match any of the zeros of the numerator, it won't simplify. It comes down to that. So that's a trick you can use if you understand it, uh, but it's not necessary. It's not officially part of the course. I'm not going to test you whether you know that or not. Although if you do think in terms of that trick, it'll help you improve calculus. So if you're struggling to keep your head above water, don't even worry about it, unless it just totally makes sense to you. But if your head's well above water, it might be worth your time to just think about it. All right, well, that's how you do it. Now, the second equation work it through in a little less detail. You have now one of the things I really hate about cancellation is people try to cancel this with this, because it's the same. Well, this is not part of the same expression that this is. This is not a factor of your denominator to divide into this numerator, okay? Can't cancel like that, and people do it all the time. So I don't even use the word cancel as much as most people do. Um, Want to see what's going on. It's got to be a factor of the denominator and a factor of the numerator that get canceled, and they have to be in the same fractional expression. Fractional expression. Okay, anyhow, factor this, pretty easy to factor. You get x squared plus, I don't know, right? It's x plus three times x plus two, and x squared minus nine is x plus three times x minus three. That's a special product that you should recognize. That's the easiest one to recognize. If it's a difference of two squares, this is a square of X, this is a square of three, right? It's a difference of two squares, you can do this. Anyhow, then X squared plus four doesn't factor. And you got X plus three times X plus two.
common denominator then has to have an x plus three. It has to have an x minus three. And it has to have an x plus three and an x plus two. Well, it's already got this x plus three here. It's got x plus three, it's got x plus three. It doesn't matter if it needs it here and here, you just need it once. Okay. Now again, but and then you're gonna need the x plus two. So now this expression contains everything that this one does. And it contains everything that this one does. We explained that at more length with some colored circles and stuff. Uh, so you might want to review that, but it's not that tricky an idea. And open math has their ways of explaining it in their examples and so forth. Okay, here's your common denominator. So now what do we do? We want to write this, and then we're going to leave ourselves a little room, because what we're going to do is completely analogous to what we do when we add two fractions with numbers. We're going to multiply numerator and denominator by whatever it takes to give us the common denominator. Now the common denominator with three and four is 12. It should be obvious. If not, go back and review the stuff we did the very first day, very first, very first assignment, okay? But you need a four here to get the common denominator 12. You can't multiply this by four and without changing the fraction. But if you multiply by four over four, you don't change the value of the fraction. You get eight twelfths, which is identical to two thirds. You know that eight twelfths reduces to two thirds. So exactly equal to two thirds. If you multiply just a numerator or just a denominator by a number, you're not gonna have anything that's identical in value to two thirds. But if you multiply by four over four, it's like multiplying by one. It doesn't change the value. Okay, well, that's what we do here. We're going to do something similar here. We want to get the same denominator for both expressions. We've identified the common denominator. There's stuff right when I talk. Stop talking while I write, whichever. Okay, so. What do we need to multiply this denominator by to get this denominator? Well, we've got x plus 3, we've got x minus 3. We need x plus 2. So we're going to have to have x plus 2 here. But if we've got x plus 2 here, to keep from changing the value of this expression, we've got to multiply by, we've got to have an x plus 2 in the numerator. So x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is equal to 1. We've then essentially multiplied this expression by 1. Same thing over here. What do we need? We have the x plus 3. We've got an x minus 2 that we don't need for this expression. It's got to be there because we need it for this one. Wait a minute. It's not an x minus 2. It's an x plus 2. Okay. So, I'm sorry, we got the x plus 3, we got the x plus 2, and what are we missing? The common denominator. We've got x plus 3 here, we've got x plus 2 here, we're missing the x minus 3. So, we multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. Then we and add the numerators. And put them all over the common denominator.
Well, there's more. Go ahead and use the distributive law carefully and explicitly without make, reverting to any tricks. We multiply out this, we multiply this out. We get it into the form of one polynomial that have an X cubed and an X squared and an X and a constant number. And we see if we can factor them. See if any of those factors match any of these factors. Well, we use the trick. There are only three numbers that could make the denominator zero. See if any of them makes the numerator zero. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through all that because uh, we've done it in, in detail previously. But there's how you get to it, and the rest is just mechanical. Okay. If you can use a distributive law, you can get it. Okay, we want to go on to a new topic. And this topic, you know, this stuff is about as hard as anything you encounter in an intermediate algebra course. So we want to do something easy. And it turns out that the quadratic formula is really pretty easy. Every number I tried to write down there would have given us a solution. Okay. Well, actually, let's let's let come back here. Let's just use this. Okay. Now there are two ways to solve this. We can factor this as x plus three times x plus four. Okay. Now, in order for two numbers to multiply out to zero, one of them better be zero. Because if you've got two numbers that aren't zero, they're not going to give you zero when you multiply them. Okay. For that reason, we say that this equation splits into two equations. Now, this looks similar to what we did with absolute value equations 100 years ago. Okay, splits into two equations with an or between them. You remember seeing that or? Okay, but you, tell me if you don't, because if you don't, it means that I'm not remembering correctly. Okay, did we see the or? Okay, yeah, if people are telling me they did, I was pretty sure we have. Since I do this in two different courses and even in a third, sometimes I don't remember, right? Okay, okay, so x plus three is zero or x plus four equals zero. So the logic ought to be clear. If x plus three equals zero, then this is zero times whatever x plus four is, right? And zero times whatever x plus four is is zero, because when you multiply by zero, that wipes out everything else. Similarly, when x plus four is zero, this whole thing is zero. That's called the multiplication property of zero property, sorry, zero property of multiplication. Okay. So we have. This. Well, this is easy to solve. You subtract three from both sides, but it's obvious that the solutions are x equals three. The solution is x equals three or it's x minus four. Okay. Make sense? All right. Now I'm going to give you a magic formula.
Okay, so if ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then x has a value. One of the two values you get here. You get two values because you have a plus minus. That means a plus or a minus. Two solutions, just like the or up here, right? So I could have written that as x equals negative b plus this thing over 2a, or x equals negative b minus this over 2a. I could have written it out as two expressions, but we understand that that's exactly what the plus and minus tells us there. Okay? So let's apply that. Let's observe that this is of this form. It's got an x squared in it. And there's a number in front of x squared, but we don't write it because why? What's the number in front of x squared? It's one. And x squared just means one x squared. We don't bother writing one. Okay, but the one is there anyway. Okay. Plus seven x. So what's the coefficient of x? Coefficient of x is the number in front of x, right? It's seven. And what's the number here? 12, obviously. Okay. So, what well, we have to let a, b, and c equal to match this expression. Write it down in your paper. A equals b equals c equals. Don't take time to copy anything else. Just write down what a, b, and c are. Just to make sure. We're on track with that. Those new people write like lightning. They went over to click, turned around, and everybody had it written out. <laughs> okay, that was good. Okay, so, okay, now you've got it. So A equals one, B equals seven, and C equals 12. Well, here's your formula. Now, this is two solutions right here, one for the plus, one for the minus. When you write the plus minus, you've actually written two solutions separated by or. But go ahead and plug the numbers in and see what you get. Okay, everybody found the solutions, no problem. You've identified A, B, and C, and it's always easy to identify A, B, and C. And then you just plug the numbers in. And I recommend that you write out all the numbers. So don't do any calculations. Just wrote, write this down with the numbers. And that does two things. It reinforces the formula. And it avoids metal errors or clerical errors. If you can get the numbers in the right place, you're going to get the right solution provided you don't make a mistake. And you can do your calculations. And the calculations are easy. Seven squared is 49. Four times one is four. And four times 12 is 48. And it's minus. Now, you want to be careful because there could be a minus in this 12. So C could have been a minus 12. If C is minus 12, then you'd have to have minus 4 times 1 times minus 12, which would mean you'd have to have, to have a plus one. So you got to be real careful about your signs. The first one, I didn't want to give you a negative sign. So nobody had to deal with that. I'm going to give you one here in a minute.
Okay. So you got negative seven plus or minus one over two because the square root of one is one. Here's when the R comes in. And that comes out negative three or negative four. All right. Well, it's no coincidence. It's the same thing we have here. Okay. Identical solutions. So even if you use this for something that factors, it's going to give you the right answer. But if it factors, you ought to factor. Because factoring is important in many courses. Okay, now let's try. I've got enough board space here to do this. Let's try. Let's try this one. It's like the one we just did, except I got a minus in front of that 12. So you're going to have to be careful about your fines. Now, I recommend that you write out the step where you identify A, B, and C, at least for this homework assignment, because it only takes a few seconds to do it. And if you were to screw that up one time, it would take you much longer to fix it then it takes you to write it out for every one of the dozen or so problems that you're going to have for homework, okay? I recommend you write it out, reinforce what's going on so you don't forget it. Okay, so we identify A is 1, B is 7, C is 12, negative 12 of so X equals negative seven plus or minus the square root of seven squared minus four times one times negative 12 over two times one. And of course, that equals a negative seven plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 48 because Four times one is four times negative 12 is negative 48, but you got a minus in front of that negative 48. That makes it a plus 48. Be careful about that because you don't want to make an error. That's negative seven plus or minus the square root of 97 over two. I'm going to write that as negative seven halves. And I can write it this way, which is a good way to write it because it's negative seven over two plus the square root of 97 over two, that should be clear. Okay, or negative seven over two minus the square root of 97 over two. The two divides both the seven and the square root of 97. And the square root of 97 is not a rational number. So if you want to write the exact solution, that's the only way you have to write it. Now, if you want to punch it in your calculator and get a number, well, that's easy to do, okay? So I think, you shouldn't have much trouble with this assignment. And, uh, and that'll be due tomorrow.